Hi friends, today I'm sitting at my desk in front of a watered down iced coffee, which is depressing really, but uh, what's not depressing is I am on the website of my favorite photographer Steve McCurry and I'm specifically looking at his India collection and I will link below to this India collection because this is th this is a collection of photos as well as his other galleries on his website that store a wealth of photographic knowledge in them. I would encourage you to sit down and just study them. And one of the things that I love about this collection as a whole is you feel you, it is classic signature Steve McCurry, and all of his all of his interesting hallmarks of his style are displayed in this series. And uh, so I'll go through them as I talk about each photo. But this is one I wanted to start with. This is a photo of a train that looks like it was built sometime in the 1940s. Interesting engineering over in India. But there are compositional elements here that make this photo extremely interesting and engaging. Uh, which lends to the end goal of telling a compelling story. And you can feel that intentionality on Steve's work as a whole. But uh, anyway, we have these interesting rivets coming down the side here. We have uh, geometric elements of the windows here. We have bicycles, two bicycles, sort of balancing the frame. Interesting red color, all these wonderful expressions. And uh, if you look on the edges, you'll see that he cuts off the windows on either side at about the same point, which provides for a sense of balance. But another thing that I love about his work so much, and you see it here, is there's this wonderful imperfection to his compositions that lend to a feeling of humanity and, and raw storytelling. And uh, the example of this here is this person. It's like an eighth of a person coming into the frame, just a hand. It's kind of imperfect, but it's imperfect with style. And Steve does that well. Another thing that I noticed throughout his work, and this photo and another photo will demonstrate it well, is that he goes, he goes, he tends to go violently in one of two directions with the way he integrates light into his photos. It's either outrageously spectacular like this, or it's a, a situation where the light is not necessarily the star of the photo, but it's everything it needs to be to tell the story of the photo in a compelling way. And I think this is a perfect example of this. There's nothing extravagant going on with the expression of light in this photo. Um, but that's okay. And he works it. And he, he uses the light intentionally. He knows what he's up to. You get that sense. Another, uh, another interesting aspect of his photography in this series is he seems to be okay with using... A longer focal length here, for example, and then a wider focal length here. So it seems like he can be quite fluid in his execution with different focal lengths. Uh, this is a, a wonderful photo of a train that looks like it's out of some sort of dystopian future with uh, people on the front, interesting expressions. People riding a train on the front at all is, is a story to tell. But uh, you, you have this interesting contrast of this of this uh, apocalyptic looking train and then a beautiful building in the background. If we move over to this photo, we see that he also he, he also understands what a photo needs to be properly interesting. And what I mean by that is with this photo, you see you see a very simple portrait, well executed, but very simple portrait. He understands that that th the only thing this photo needed to shine was this man's face with the uh, with the colors all over it. The background is a simple gray background, and the story is told without needing to be extravagant. And being able to see those things is a skill that I think it takes a lot of time to grow as a photographer, as with the, uh, you know any other skill. Let me move down the line here. It's another photo we can look at. This is one that I think this one makes me extremely ang angry, and the reason why is because I I wish that I could come across this scene and might. <laughs> my daily life in downtown Salt Lake City, but I think you have to go to India to capture a green person in a sea of red. This is just a compositionally uh, dreamlike experience, I would imagine, to come across. 
This photo also presents another signature of Steve's style, which is what I would call intentionally restricted compositions. In other words, he's chopping things out of the photo and leaving things in the photo in a way that makes you feel like you know exactly what he's up to. And he's doing this in order to tell a story and in order to control the chaos of the world, whenever, which happens whenever you're shooting in a photojournalistic type of setting. This is one of my favorite things about his style, and he does it beautifully. This is a photo that I think photographers try to pull off uh, this, you know, point down at a reflection and get uh, photographers try to pull this off on a daily basis and fail miserably. Steve did this with style. Beautiful lighting. I love the, the contrast of the warm tones and the blue uh, tones as well. This seems like a, a very good example of the aesthetic of a lot of parts of India. And I think that's that's fantastic. This is a photo that I think breaks a couple of rules that I would pursue on a daily basis with my own work. And I think these are good rules or, or guidelines, if you will, to follow on a daily basis if you're if you're in a much more normal setting than, uh, or, or let's, let's say if you're in a setting that's not as extravagant as this one. And one of the guidelines I try to go by is to try to not take photos of the backs of people unless it really happens to work for some reason. I think this is an example of when it does happen to work for some reason. Uh, but I think what makes this photo come together and makes this back shot kind of work is the interestingness of the scene itself and also the fact that you feel like this kid's running somewhere. He's about to go around the corner. There are a lot of elements that come together that, that make this work in a way that it may not work in another scene. This is another example of the extravagant lighting side of the spectrum. This is like some sort of video game or painting. Just incredible, incredible work. Beautiful light streaks. I love how grainy this image is. This also contributes to a, a sense of raw humanity. It has a, a wonderful aesthetic to it, uh, to the colors and tones. This one's interesting because in a sea of white people, this one blue person who's laughing um, hysterically, it, I think Steve caught on to this, is my guess, is that he saw this with his photographic eye and said, okay, I can set him apart. I can make him a focal point of the image and then uh, have the eye start here, catch his, his expression, and then move all around through the rest of the expressions and the rest of the people in the frame. And, and you kind of go, what's going on here? I like it, but what's going on here? So anyway, th these are just a, a couple of the photos, I would encourage you to sit down and look at them in detail and try to bridge the creative gap in your mind between your work and his work in this situation. And uh, you may find that the gap may be quite, quite big in some areas because he is a phenomenal photographer um, and, and all time great, I think. But uh, I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day.